Hi, thanks for joining me. This video is intended as a follow-up to an earlier video in which I demonstrated a very simple technique for converting CD audio into an MP3 file that can then be emailed as an attachment. You can view that video by clicking right here. In that particular case, my friend Peggy had an audio CD of music she had produced and she wanted to take one of the cuts from that CD and convert it to an MP3 file that she could then email as an attachment to her friends. It turns out, however, that Peggy's needs are a little more complex with this project, and so our response may also need to be a little bit more complex, but not too much so. Specifically, what Peggy needed to do was to cut out certain portions of that track and needed to edit out some of the pieces. And as I noted in that earlier video, Peggy is also a Mac user. And so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate another technique that will help us get that job done, again using free software that comes preloaded on the Mac. In this particular case, we'll be using GarageBand to do some very rudimentary editing with this audio file. So first, I'm going to go ahead and insert the CD. And as before in the other video, the CD mounts on my desktop and it's also recognized by iTunes and shows up in the iTunes interface. And at the moment, we don't need to be importing the audio for this particular demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of iTunes for the moment and focus on the disk icon that mounts on the desktop. Now, in your case, you might not actually see the CD mounting on the desktop. And if it doesn't, you might want to go and double check the preferences in Finder by going up to the Finder preferences in the upper left hand pane of the Finder and select preferences and ensure that the CDs, DVDs and iPods check mark is activated. If it's not, you can uncheck it and see that the icon for the disk no longer mounts on the desktop. But if it's checked, it shows up on the desktop as you see right here. So now that it's on my desktop, I can double click it and open up that window. And it shows me the files that are on the CD. And I'm going to go ahead and take the track that I want, in this case track one, and simply drag it right onto my desktop. As I do this, it's actually not moving it off of the CD. The CD is a permanently written media and this process doesn't change the file structure on it in any way. All I'm doing is duplicating my selected track and putting that duplicate file onto my desktop. Once it has duplicated that file, I can go ahead and close that window and eject that CD. Now there might actually be a few different applications already on the Mac that would probably be able to handle the very rudimentary audio editing that we need to have done with this particular project. In this case, I'm going to be using GarageBand. So let me go ahead and open up GarageBand. And if you've got previous GarageBand projects already on your system, it may prompt you to open one of those. But for our purposes here, I'm going to create a new project. And when I do, it presents me with this list of options to determine which kind of project I want to create. For our purposes here, it doesn't really matter which one I choose. These options essentially help arrange the interface of GarageBand to be most amenable to the type of project I plan to work on. But in our case with this video, None of these things really apply because we're not going to be utilizing most of the key features that GarageBand is known for. So you can really choose any of them. And I'm going to go ahead and just select the one that says Piano and click Choose. And then I need to create a song name. And by default, it will say my song. Let's call this Test Edit File. And uh, then we have to designate where we want to have this project file stored. I generally like to just put it on the desktop for immediate reference. So I'm going to leave it as desktop right now and hit create. And it's going to create a project file for GarageBand and place it on my desktop and open it up. Now it shows us the GarageBand interface and, and for our purposes here, we're not really going to be exploring all of the key features or learn how to use GarageBand in general. And in fact, we don't even really need this initializing track that GarageBand has placed here for us to begin building our project. So I can just make sure that the track is highlighted, go up to track in the menu and click delete track and it's gone. At this point, I can then take the file that I have sitting on our desktop and drag it right into the GarageBand interface. And when I do, I can see that the track has been built that shows our audio file that we want to edit. We can zoom in and out of the view to get an idea of what it looks like in the interface. And we can zoom in closer for more detail in the areas we may want to work with. 
let's go ahead and give it a quick listen. And as I do, I'm going to turn off the automated click track that's turned on in GarageBand by default. So I'm already hearing some stuff that I want to get rid of that's not part of the track that we need. And I can do that by simply dragging in on the front of it. And I can get a little bit more detailed by clicking this little scissors icon for cutting. It's called the track editor. And when I do, to be a little more detailed about the area that I'm working on. And when I've got the pointer over some place I need to cut, I can go up to the edit menu and click on split. And you can also see that it gives me a shortcut of command T that I can activate. And when I do, it shows me the left and the right sides of the point at which I split and I can get rid of what I don't need. I can then drag the remaining part of the track to the very beginning and then I can peruse the rest of the track for points at which I need to make other edits. So let's say for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to be only using this particular portion here that ends right around here and I'm going to split there and get rid of what I don't want. And that may be just a slightly abrupt ending of the file that I wanted to retain. So if I need to, I can also click the disclosure triangle to reveal track volume controls and create a fade out by clicking on this little line here to get manipulation dots that I can use to then create a nice fade out. In this case, my fade out is not very long shows for perhaps about one second. So let's say I want a nice four or five second fade out to make it sound a little bit more graceful. So now I can close this disclosure triangle to hide my volume edits and now all I need to do is export my edited audio file. To do that in GarageBand I just go up here to the share menu and I look at the options that are made available to me there. As you may remember, our purposes for this demonstration was to create an MP3 file that we could then email as an attachment. And to do that, I simply click Export Song to Disk. And then look at the options that are available to me in the Export pane. And it gives me the options of making an AAC encoded file or an MP3 encoder file. And I'm going to go ahead and choose MP3, choose the quality that I want, good, high, or higher. And I'm going to choose higher and export the file straight to my desktop as the test edit file title that I had given my project file. I now have a file on my desktop called test edit file mp3 and from here I can then email this file as an attachment but before I do I wanted to show you another way to do this in case your version of GarageBand doesn't show the same export options that I showed here. Now if you're using an earlier version of GarageBand then the sharing or export options that I showed you might not be available to you and in fact you might be limited to only being able to send your finished audio to your iTunes library and if that's the case then all you need to do is send the song to iTunes and it might default to the playlist of your user account information and click share. And then it opens up your iTunes library and shows you that your song has been imported into iTunes. Now again, if you're using that earlier version of GarageBand, you aren't given the option to compress it into an AAC or an MP3 file. And what ends up in your iTunes library is a full CD quality file that itself is going to be too large to email. And if I just click on the file that was just imported here into my iTunes library, I can right click on it and get info on the file and I see that it's, it's only 9.3 megabytes. But that's pretty large for a song file that we want to send through email. This one's pretty small because it's only 55 seconds long. But if it was perhaps a full length song then that file size would be much larger and might be too big to send as an email attachment. No worries though because within iTunes it's very easy to compress the file to an mp3 file. If you right click or control click on the file in your iTunes library, you're given a list of options of what you can do with that file. In this particular case, we want to create a compressed version. Now, our compression settings right now in iTunes are using the default 
AAC. In this case, we want to create an MP3 version, and so we need to change our compression settings. Now, in my previous video, that was easy to do in the lower right-hand part of the pane when we had a CD installed. But in this particular case, we don't have the CD currently installed in iTunes, so we have to go up to the iTunes Preferences, and in the General tab, select Import Settings, and change those to the MP3 setting that we wanted earlier. And just click OK. And now when we right-click or control-click on that file, that option has been changed to create MP3 version. And if we just select that, iTunes is going to create a compressed version of that file. Now, I may not show it in this particular playlist, but if we go up to our music library and click Test Edit File, or whatever name you've given your particular song file, we see that we now have two of them in our iTunes library. And we need to find out which one is which by getting the information from the file and finding out the size. And this file size says it's 1.3 megabytes, which is much smaller than the other file size. So this must be the one that we're looking for. And all I need to do is grab it and drag it to my desktop to have a file that I can easily email to my recipients. Let me delete the one that I have on the desktop now, and I'll show you how easy that is to do. Just grab it by clicking once and drag it to your desktop and it deposits a duplicate of that mp3 file onto my desktop from which I can then create an email message type in my recipients my subject and drag this file right into my email message and they will receive it as an attachment when they get that email well that's about it for this simple demonstration of how to convert CD audio to an edited mp3 file that you can then email as an attachment. Not as complex as one might think, and I hope you found it pretty easy too. Thanks for watching.